This is a Rogue Media Network podcast. Welcome to Bois, Bois, King of the Hill podcast. I'm Mike. And I'm Rusty. Rusty, season five, episode 10, Yankee Hanky. Yankee Hanky. Yep, this is yeah. where he finds out that he can't get the license plate. Yeah. The native it. Texan plates. I re- do you remember when those plates came out? Mm, I don't remember Yeah, at all. see, I remember I can't that. get them, so I'll have to get them by, I, I might make my... Because you're not a Texan? Or yeah, what? I might register a car in one of my kids' names uh, and then get the native Texan plate. <laughs> yeah, I I remember... Stolen when, Valor. When I was a... <laughs> When I was a kid, uh, plates were all the same, you know, and you you didn't you didn't yeah, you didn't get customized plates. No, you didn't f with your plates, uh, and only douchebags had uh, personalized plates, yeah. you know. Uh, but now, speaking as a douchebag, uh, I have personalized plates. Uh, you do, but they're to support my favorite basketball team rather than uh, rather than the state necessarily. Uh, all right. It, is, it does make it easy to remember my license plate number. Though. Yeah, it does. It's just SAS20 yeah, for yeah, yeah. Manu Ginobili. All right, here we go. Season 5, Episode 10, Yankee Hanky. Uh, no bell, no yell. I uh, don't know if I've said that in the last few. Uh, we start off with all four guys uh, gathered around the Bugabago uh, looking at Dale's new license plate. By the way, his number is LXD352, or maybe it's LYD. I don't know. My writing sucks. Uh, Bill says, oh, a t- uh, Texas native license plate. It's got that new license plate smell. That's not a thing, Bill. Yeah, that's not a thing. They smell like the inside of a prison. <laughs> Hank, <laughs> Hank says, boy, sure, a set of those sure would look sharp on my truck. Heck, they'd look sharp anywhere. And then you get Boomhauer. I tell you what, man, talking about him, I had 20% on Blue Book Value, man. Uh, yeah, which, add 20% great. to your Blue Book Value. <laughs> it's not yeah, adding right. 20% Boomhauer, but all right. Uh, then you get Dale. That is a capital idea with a capital I. Then all three of us will have them. No offense, Bill. You being from Luzerana. Uh, and boy, does he think that's funny. He thinks that's the funniest thing ever. It makes Bill immediately sad. Uh, Bill says, and my plates usually are so covered with mud anyway. I really want one. Hank said, it's okay, Bill. You can ride with me after I put my new plates on. I don't care where you're from. He goes, thank you, Hank. He goes, just duck down whenever I pass another real Texan. <laughs> <laughs> and then they toast beers yep. over over Bill's sad head, which is <laughs> poor freaking Bill. Uh, all right. So now we are uh, at the Hill House uh, in the kitchen with Peggy uh, and Hank. They're going through, I don't know, did you ever have one of those records uh, boxes like fireproof box that that your parents kept records in and stuff. Not not like albums, but like papers and stuff. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, we had. Uh, I remember we had a couple of them. My parents had one that would look like a tackle box, and it had a bunch of uh, like coins that they had brought over from Taiwan oh, yeah, when yeah. they were over there. And then the other one was all full of like this kind of shit. You know, the birth certificates and fingerprints and all that stuff. And then where you were born was Taiwan. Yeah. Yeah, my dad was in the Air Force. You're Taiwanese. No. Okay. I was born on a on a, uh, a U.S. Air Force base, so it's considered U.S. soil. Oh, I got you. Yeah. But as a kid, I did want to celebrate both birthdays, the fourth and the fifth, uh, because it's the fifth over there and it's the fourth <laughs> I over got here. You. I got yeah. you. I got I you. I tried to get it. I tried to squeeze. Do you it remember as much Taiwan? Were no, you, you weren't no, old I enough was to very, remember. Very little. Yeah, very yeah. Little. I think we came back and went to uh, San Angelo when I was like six months old or something. Oh, good fellow. Yeah. Oh, that's yeah, cool. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Do you remember San Angelo? 
Not a lot, just through pictures. Just through pictures. Um, I the one thing I do remember is that there was a heater grate in the floor. You remember those heater grates? That yeah. They were putting sh- yeah. And I would trip over it, and my I would bust my lip every time. I don't know. But I only remember that because they told me that, and I see some pictures. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. yeah. I think it. Uh, I think that's what started me down the road of uh, brain problems. So. Yeah, potentially. All right, so we'll blame it on that. <laughs> yeah, that's it. It wasn't the alcohol. Yeah, it wasn't the alcohol at all. Uh, all right, so we're in the kitchen with Peggy and Hank. They're at the uh, kitchen table and they're looking through one of these fireproof boxes. Hank says, uh, "Any sign of my birth certificate yet?" Peggy says, "To be perfectly honest, no." What? That doesn't even make any sense, to be None. perfectly honest. <laughs> what, would you hide it? Yeah. Uh, Hank says, oh, I better call my mom. He gets up and uh, uses uh, what is uh, a, a, a super relic today, the wall phone. The wall with phone. With the extra long cord so you could go in the next room and still be talking to somebody. You know, I went on just after watching this, after I watched this, I went to uh, Amazon and I just, you know, Googled retro phone, Bluetooth, all this stuff. Yeah. You could get phones that... Uh, you get the handset that you plug into your phone or Bluetooth in your phone? No, 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 no. One of them is an actual, like, old, it looks like an old style phone mm-hmm. with, a, with a, a, a deal that goes on the top. Yeah. And you Bluetooth your phone to it. Oh, wow. So it could be used. So you use it as an actual it, handset? It could be used as both. So oh, what wow. it does is it has a feature, like, if you still have a landline, which there are oh, yeah. some people that still have landlines. By the way, not a bad idea to have a landline in your house uh, because... They do run electricity through those. It's very small amount, but when all the lights are out and all the stuff is off, you could still power up a phone through one of those things. Yeah, yeah, those phones still work. Yeah. Copper but, wiring, uh, baby. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But they have uh, a feature on that particular phone to where you can have it connect to a landline or connect to and and at the same time connect to your cell phone. So like all your oh, phone wow. calls go through that when you're at home, hmm. kind of thing. That's kind of cool. So. Uh, kind of defeats the purpose, but sure, that's great. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, I, I do, thought so too. I do have an old uh, desk, uh, like a regular rotary phone around here somewhere. <laughs> There's a device that you could get for those. Well, that's what I was going to say. I, yeah. I would love to to convert that. So that we could take calls, you know, during the show. Yeah, or yeah, yeah. Something. No, there's that. There, there, there is a device that can take those. There, there. It's like you just plug the phone up yeah. to it, and it's like a box yeah. that. Well, it's a Bluetooth it. box, basically, right? Yeah, yeah, I mean, yeah, something you can like Bluetooth that. Into yeah, yeah, it or yeah. whatever. All right, so he goes. I uh, better call my mom. Um, he says, "I'm pretty sure the license plate uh, people are going to need to see a birth certificate." What? No, they don't, Hank. No. Nope. Otherwise, you'd have a bunch of Oklahomans trying to get Texas native plates. Uh, Tilly answers the phone Tilly being his mom She says hello Hank says mom Look this isn't a social call I'm just phoning to get a copy Of my birth certificate He has to clarify that Right off the bat This is not a social call I don't want to talk to you much Uh, Tilly says your birth certificate Well what makes you think I'd have something like that Because I wouldn't And I don't And she hangs up She is super nervous Right So you know something's up here Yeah she's real nervous Hank says uh, Oh that was weird and then, of course, shitty Peggy in the background. Well, I found my birth certificate, seven pounds, six ounces. Perfect. <laughs> Whatever <laughs> that, that means. Where Whatever does, that means. Where does that standard come yeah, from? Where, I just don't what is that? that at all. <laughs> all right. So now we're at the Casa Linda Apartments uh, where Cotton and uh, GH and uh, what's her name? What's his wife's name? <laughs> For some Didi, reason, sorry. Didi, it just yeah, left I don't know why I blank too. Yeah, well, it's Didi. Didi. Well, it's Didi. one of those things. As soon as you ask somebody, that's when they forget it. You know. Yeah. And yeah, then, yeah. yeah. Uh, so yeah, that's she's, where she's literally one character that if they brought the show back, I <laughs> could care less. Like she, she has very, very I few parts know, that I just don't find her. I don't find any scene, any scene we've seen up to to, the, to this point. Yeah. There's just not been any I find that are just knock <laughs> knock me down funny. I just like stupid people, so I think it's funny. Uh, so Hank's knocking on Cotton's door. Uh, Cotton answers. He's holding GH. He goes, hey, Dad, uh, I got you a little housewarming present. It's a basket of fruit. Peggy made it up for you. It's mostly oranges. <laughs> uh, Cotton walks away with the basket. He goes, is that a kiwi in there? You know how I feel about hairy fruits. <laughs> 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 I got to admit, I'm kind of right there with him. Uh, Hank says, yeah, uh, so, hey, when you were picking up, uh, uh, packing up the house in Houston, did you happen to come across my birth certificate? GH starts crying, uh, and, uh, Cotton, Cotton, you know, you can see that something's hit him also, and behind him, you can see that there's a large wall full of, like, VHS tapes, right? Just black, just black VHS tapes. Which is probably just a lot of porn knowing this old man. He says, uh, you think I got enough room in this cracker box for your baby crap? He says, well, maybe you could have kept my birth certificate and tossed out some of those videos. 
He says, uh, those videos are a GH. They mean something to me. Ooh. <laughs> he goes, Dee Dee, get the camera. He's doing it again. Baby starts coughing or something. Yeah. Uh, Hank leaves. Now we're back at the Hill House. Uh, they're getting in bed. Hank is talking to Peggy. Uh, if I didn't know those two hadn't spoken in four years, I'd swear they were in some kind of conspiracy. Peggy says, well, either this is your dream and I am in it, or this is your life and your parents are acting weird because you're adopted. Whoa. <laughs> what a bitch. Yeah, that's that's Jeez, terrible. That's rough. You said you said earlier before we started recording that this shows uh, well, how shit he is. It's Peggy <laughs> is continually <laughs> continuing <laughs> to shine. <laughs> Wait for the next line because this is this is another uh, uh, fact that makes a cotton really crappy. Yeah. He goes, uh, adopted. No, my dad hates adopted children. <laughs> he hates adopted children. How would you? Uh, oh how would you God. feel about? Well, not not <laughs> not saying that I would hate an adopted child, but uh, I would never adopt a child. Really? Why is uh, that? I would never adopt a child. Uh, I just I don't know. I just I just I just not something that I ever saw myself ever doing. See, I think um, if you took maybe fifteen years off of me, I I wouldn't mind doing that. I think that'd be great. Adopt them. Yeah, yeah, because my wife's adopted. Uh, my cousin's adopted. Yeah. Um, yeah, I mean, I think honestly, there's a lot of a lot of struggle out there t- for people trying to get pregnant and yeah, stuff. Yeah, when yeah. there's a lot of kids that need help, you know, I think it's a, a true testament to somebody's character. Whenever I whenever I hear that somebody's sure. adopted somebody, I'm like, yeah. man, you're a better man than I ever well, could be. The two folks that own the uh, the um, uh, beer and pizza place that we're going to have this event at, yeah. or that we had this event at, um, they adopted two kids oh, and beautiful. not even same race. And, and they were like 17 or something when they adopted them uh, just crazy, so they yeah. could help them and help them get into college and all that. That's stuff. awesome. It yeah. Is, that's awesome. Amazing. Like I said, that's, Those that's why when I saints. see people that do yeah. that, it's like, man, you're a way better human being than I could ever <laughs> yeah. be. It would be hard though. It'd yeah. be hard. Uh, he goes adopted. No, my dad hates adopted children, which is quite a <laughs> That's statement. Terrible. Peggy says exactly, which is why Cotton treats your brother G H, uh, who we know for sure is not adopted, much better than you, uh, whose percentage is. Let's face it. Question mark. Damn. He goes. My mom wouldn't just hang up on me for no reason. God, maybe I really am adopted. She says, Well, there would be clues. Think back to when you were a child. Now, Hank, did your parents ever tell you were adopted? Hank. Hank. <laughs> He says, <laughs> yeah. wow. he says uh, how do I even know that's my name? My real parents might have called me Henry or Chris. God, Peggy, what, what if, if I'm, I'm a Chris? Chris? <laughs> <laughs> Sorry to all the Chrises yeah, of the world. Chris's. I know some good Chrises. I know some good Chrises. Uh, Hank is now in Dale's basement, and they're looking at Dale's... Uh, what well, has to be like a Commodore 64 <laughs> or something. Something. Uh, and they're both drinking beer. He says, well, if I was adopted, that means my real dad could be anybody. Hey, maybe even Tom Landry. I do have a strong chin and a love for the flex defense. <laughs> love for the flex defense. Like <laughs> he that. says, I wonder if I would have called him dad or coach. Oh, who am I kidding? It would have been, been sir. sir. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Dale starts tapping on the computer, and he says, uh, before we sue the Landry estate for child support, I'm going to need your social. Uh, he moves back. Uh, while Hank comes up to type it in, but Dale is in the background, like sp- spying on what Hank's typing in, lifting his glasses up and down, and trying to figure out what his social security <laughs> number is. Uh, uh, yeah, Hank finishes. Dale moves back over, and he goes, uh, "Now we download. Enter. Hank, are you standing on the cable? It says here your birth parents are Tilly and Cotton Hill. Are you standing on the cable? That's not that's the way funny. computers work. That's though. hilarious, though. That's good. <laughs> Hank says, uh, well, I guess that's a relief. At least I can keep loving my mom. Let me take a look. He's looking down the page, and he goes, place of birth, New York, New York. And then we get a whoo. We get, we get the most <laughs> the guttural loudest, blah yeah. ever. <laughs> ever yeah. blah! I mean, yeah, it, is, it, is the, it is rough. It might be the loudest one to date. <laughs> and that takes us to our first commercial break. We'll be right, right back. back. Snack Attack is a podcast about the history of your favorite snacks, candies, and treats. Each five-minute or less episode features the history of a great snack from around the world. We'll also visit what the status of the snack is today and give you a little knowledge to lord over your friend. Snack Attack is available anywhere you get your podcast or at RogueMediaNetwork.com. Let's get snacking! Step into the unexpected with Cultastic, or How to Start a Cult Without Really Trying. A podcast where cult creation unfolds in the most unpredictable way. 
Join us on a unique journey into the world of theoretical cult formation. Unlike any other podcast, each episode of Cultastic is co-written in part using ChatGPT, and we let it decide our fate, good or bad. What makes Cultastic truly intriguing? We don't know what's coming each week. Together with our AI co-author, we'll discover and build this cult one episode at a time, exploring various aspects of cult dynamics, leadership, and group psychology. Delve into themes of charisma, influence, and the power of group thinking. It's a blend of expert analysis, theoretical exploration, and the unforeseen twists of AI-generated ideas. Remember, Cultastic is an exercise in imagination and education where we weave a narrative one episode and one tenant at a time. Curious about where this journey will take us? Subscribe to Cultastic or How to Start a Cult without really trying on your favourite podcast platform or at roguemedianetwork.com. Let's build this mission to save the people of Earth week by unpredictable week. They were out of apple pies and honey buns. Oh, it's a dark day. Yeah, in it's the a Alaco. really dark day. All right, here we go, and we're back. Uh, we are now uh, back with Hank pounding on Cotton's door again, and I mean pounding. He he wants to know what the hell's going on. Cotton answers in a bathrobe, holding a glass of whiskey, which I would think that's pretty much the way Cotton is most of the yeah, time. Yeah, probably. He goes, "How come you never told me I was born in New York? What New York?" You, was were, a, you wasn't. You was adopted. adopted. Yeah. <laughs> he goes, yeah, worst $50 I ever spent. <laughs> yeah, and then this terrible line here. He says, could have got me a matching pair of Chinese babies for $10. <laughs> yeah, he's a, he's a turd, all right. <laughs> yeah. He's a turd. Uh, Hank says, I was born in New York City of your seed. Uh, Cotton finally just kind of gives up, sits down, facing the other way. He goes, Hank, I always knew this day would come, and I'd have to tell you the whole sad story. Uh, maybe it was my fault for loving your mother so much back when she was still worth loving. Jesus. Yeah, uh, that's crazy. Then, then we get that's this, a crazy line. Then we get this uh, very like yellowish uh, flashback. Yeah. So it's back to the time when they were hitting New York or whatever. Uh, oh, the and, sepia tone. And yeah. Tilly is so pregnant. I mean, very, very pregnant. Uh, they're getting out of a cab there in New York. And Cotton is uh, kind of talking through this thing. He goes, Tilly had always wanted to see New York City. She heard about it at the beauty parlor. Well, we weren't due for another few weeks, so I brought Tilly a fancy new maternity dress and took her out to the Rainbow Room. Uh, and the, the thing I like about this thing is, like, if you ever watch any old movies, to pass time or the fact that a guy's a drunk or somebody's walking down the street or whatever, you'll see all the neon signs pass them, and they're just kind of walking in place, you know, yeah, in yeah, the black. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And so you see a lot they of that. They do that with uh, The Simpsons does that a lot oh, with yeah. Homer. Oh, sure. Like Homer walking down the street, and it's like the way the street's yeah, kind of like, it's yeah. kind of like bubbled up behind yeah, him. Yeah. yeah. Uh, so you see all those logos, and then uh, – uh, it passes by like an old, uh, it's, uh, like I say, like in an old movie. Then we see a very posh uh, dancing place, uh, drinks, champagne, all that stuff. Uh, he goes, uh, took it to the Rainbow Room, a place as romantic as it was expensive. Uh, and again, they're dancing, they got their arms linked, they're drinking champagne. Then he kisses her hand, takes her out there to dance. He goes, how your mama loved to dance. Maybe I dipped her too hard, or maybe old Blue Eyes greased the rail. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and so you hear the sound of water. Uh, he dips her real deep, and her water breaks. Uh, he says, next thing I know, we're trying to keep you from making your debut on Broadway. Uh, the ambulance comes up. They get in the ambulance, goes real fast, uh, down to Midtown Memorial Hospital, where Hank is born. The next thing we see is uh, Cotton sitting out in front of the hospital, because, you know, the fathers never went in before. You know, they hardly ever were even there. Uh, he's sitting outside on the stoop smoking a stogie. Uh, Tilly comes out with the baby, all of her, yeah. her suitcases and all the stuff. He just looks at her, 
and she just continues to carry stuff. She even struggles to open the cab door for him. This this guy, I he he amazes me is how shitty he is sometimes. Yeah, he's he's out of there. Uh, he says three days later we took a premature bundle of you back to Texas. Uh, like I say, he doesn't help her with anything. He goes, I never told you because I didn't think you were man enough to handle it. Not being born in Texas, you weren't. <laughs> uh, yeah, that's rough. So the flashback ends. Uh, Hank says, well, thank you, I guess, for not leaving me there. Don't thank me. Thank your mother. No, I mean, don't mention anything to her. He opens the door for Hank to leave. He goes, she's never forgiven herself for birthing you outside of Texas. It'd kill her if, he, if she knew you found out. Well, maybe it should. Oh, I don't mean that. You know, and he just yeah. kind of walks off. Uh, Cotton shuts the door, and he looks through the little peephole, and so you see a fisheye version of Hank just kind of sad and, and stumbling off. Uh, uh, yeah. I don't want to interrupt Go you, for it. but I did the uh, – I went and looked up that montage where you're talking about how yeah. the walk mm-hmm. is. Yeah. Apparently, that's a – a, a, it's a, a trope, if you will, called oh, the yeah. drunken montage. Because I started thinking of what movies I'd seen it in when we talked about yeah. it. But it's kind of like in Fear and Loathing mm-hmm. when they're walking through the casino and yeah. they're all on yeah. acid and stuff like that. I think and there's then, a uh, scene like that in uh, It's a Wonderful Life. Like where he's walking down the street and he's freaking out, you know, and all yeah, the yeah, stuff yeah, is yeah, passing yeah. him and stuff. And then uh, 28 Days, oh, uh, yeah. Sandra Bullock, when she was forced to go to yeah. rehab in the movie 28 Days. Walking by all the bars yeah, and yeah, stuff yeah. and Malk beckoning out to you. By the way, I always get 28 Days and 28 Days Later mixed up. One is a zombie movie and the other one is Sandra Bullock trying to get, get uh, sober. Yeah. Um, they did 28 then, Days uh, Later and then they did 28... Weeks, weeks or months or whatever months, it was like now they're they're coming out with a new one 28 years later yeah, yeah, yeah. and so i That's guess like a zombie movie yeah it's yeah, well yeah. it's a rage virus yeah yeah but yeah. it's basically zombies yeah. and then apparently the one that uses the trope the most is obviously uh, Homer Simpson, because mm-hmm. that's whenever you, whenever I seen the scene, that's what I always think of Homer Simpson. Because there's like one, two, three, four, five, six or seven episodes where they use that, where they use it, and then wow. uh, they even used it in Futurama too. Uh, Bender, oh, I can see that. Bender did that or yeah. whatever, passing uh, like oil places in like season <laughs> one. It was like in their first season. Yeah, yeah. So uh, Cotton immediately gets on the phone uh, and he goes, "Topsy, remember that thing we said we were gonna do but never did? No, we did that. We did the hell out of that." I mean, the other thing, I think it's time we finally completed our mission. So we got this ominous thing going yeah. on with Cotton and Topsy. Uh, now we're in the living room, uh, and uh, Hank and Peggy are sitting in those big green chairs they have, the wingback chairs. Hank's got a bunch of beers, by the way. He's already gone through a few, and he's got one in his hand. Peggy's reading out of a magazine. He says, uh, Peggy, being born in New York makes me no better than Tony Randall. Tony <laughs> Randall. <laughs> She says, uh, now, Hank, if being born here is so important, why did you marry me? I didn't marry you right away. Believe me, I had to pray on it. <laughs> she, yeah. she says, maybe you should have opened your eyes and then your Bible, Hank. Red, yellow, black, and white. We are all precious in his sight. <laughs> <laughs> Nothing about New York in there. <laughs> she goes, well, Sodom is in there, Hank, and Gomorrah, and they are as New York as all get out. <laughs> Sodom and Gomorrah. I got a, an artifact for yeah, us now. about Sodom and Gomorrah? No, about Cotton's story that he uh, he just told here. Oh, yeah? Uh, so during the story, how they do the cutback, like you're talking about, and they go through mm-hmm. all, well, Artie's picking them apart for us. So the ticker reads, Ike favors Hawaiian statehood. <laughs> okay. Okay, so which puts the time frame before August 21st, 1959, because that's uh-huh. the day that they yeah. were made a state. Yeah. Okay, federal, uh, federal. Fidel Castro visited the United States in April 15th, 1959. He placed okay. a wreath on George Washington's grave, toured the Bronx Zoo, ate hot dogs and hamburgers at Yankee Stadium. Yeah. So People had a real problem with people that. People had a huge problem yeah. with that, I'm sure, yeah. in the 50s, especially oh, yeah. in the 50s. Uh, well, that was before the Cuban Missile Crisis, but not way before. Not way. It was like a decade before, yeah. maybe. Uh, maybe less than that. Uh, Cotton said that Hank wasn't due for another few weeks. So Hank's birth certificate doesn't show his actual birth, but it has to be between April the 15th and August the 21st, 1959. Mm. So that gives us a roundabout. So Hank, mm. if, 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 if we're going by... So he'd be 63, 64 years 64, old 64, wow. yeah, 64. Hmm. Okay. Well, and that's not terrible for this reboot, if that's you perfect. actually go by that. Yeah, that's, that's not terrible perfect. at all. I mean, look at that. They had that TV show. Uh, what was it? Uh, Modern Family with a oh yeah, uh, yeah, yeah a seventy-year-old yeah. sure. sure. Ed Bundy on yeah. there. Yeah. yeah. All right. Now all four of the guys are in the alley. You can tell that Hank is sad. You hear? Yep. 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 
Uh, and then Dale goes, yep. Or should I say yada, yada, yada? Should I hang? <laughs> so like, Whatever the hell that means. Well, what he's talking about is Seinfeld. <laughs> yeah, oh, yeah, okay. I yeah. got you. Yeah, sure. Oh, speaking of which, isn't that the name of the podcast? Yeah. The it, Seinfeld it, it, podcast. Yeah, yeah, so if you like there. Seinfeld, there's a... Go ahead and talk about that real fast. It is called uh, The Podcast About Nothing, Seinfeld, and Yada, Yada, Yada. There you go. Yeah. A couple of local folks do that. Uh, and he says, or should I say yada, yada, yada? Shut up, Dale. Uh, and then you hear... Uh, Bill say, boy, you New Yorkers really are rude. <laughs> <laughs> I love how everything in this show, as soon as something happens, that's the way everything is. That's the way it's got to you know? be. So as soon as they found that yeah. out, they're like, oh, he's from New York. Screw him. All right. Now, uh, Hank comes into the kitchen with Bobby. Bobby's already at the table kind of looking through something. He goes, Dad, what is Joseph, uh, what Joseph's been telling everyone at school true about where you're from? He goes, oh, I'm sorry, Bobby. I'm from New York. Bobby says, get out. I always knew I had a little New York in me. I mean, Bobby's super <laughs> yeah, he loves happy it. about this. He's not even mad. No, he goes, now scary. I know where it came from. Did you meet Woody Allen and hang out in the village? I mean, <laughs> that's like asking us, you know, do you get on your horse and ride to Dallas? Was it known at that time that Woody Allen was no, a creep? I think this is before that. Yeah. Uh, no, nah, this came out in the, like 2000. Oh, yeah. maybe so then. I don't know. Uh, I guess he didn't get ostracized though, really, from the industry, did he? Oh, he still hadn't. He's still making he's, films. He still makes like films. He just released like a French film. It's all in French. Uh, what he's, about Roman Polanski? Dude, Does he still make no, films? No, Roman Polanski. I think Polanski's dead, but he was never allowed to come back to. But America. he made like amazing films over there, though, didn't he? Did he make like really good films? He made a lot of no, films. He's actually still alive. He's ninety. Is he? Okay. He's ninety years old. Hank says, uh, "I left when I was three days old." Okay. Bobby goes, "Oh, everything about moving back." Hank just says, no, <laughs> no. Like he's very adamant. No, we ain't going back. All right, now we're at the VFW, mm -hmm. but we're in the backyard of the VFW because, as we know, every VFW has a backyard, <laughs> and uh, so all these guys are standing around. They're digging a hole. So this is Topsy. Uh, I thought it was Fatty, but it's Stinky. Stinky. Uh, Irwin and Irwin, yeah. Cotton and Cotton uh, and uh, Stinky's actually voiced by. Uh, Ed Asner, really? which was Lou Grant yeah. on the Mary Tyler yeah. Moore show, which uh, I'm pretty sure none of us, uh, uh, most people listening to this probably don't know what that is. Uh, Erwin Linker is yeah. voiced by Jack Carter. Okay, yeah, I know Jack Carter. He was a famous old comedian, uh, like vaudeville kind of stuff. Uh, so Stinky's holding the lantern, um, and uh, Erwin, <laughs> or... Uh, uh, Cotton is digging the hole. He's down in the hole, and he goes, Erwin, he's got get the in eyebrows. Here and give me a hand. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. He yeah, had the very, very expressive yeah, eyebrows. Very I don't know eyebrows. his name, but I know he's the very expressive eyebrow yeah. guy. He was on that. Uh, it was the Cavalcade of the Stars uh -huh. or whatever back yeah, in the day. Sure. Yeah, yeah, on TV. Uh, he goes, Erwin, get in here and give me a hand. Erwin says, I ain't getting in no damn hole until I'm dead. <laughs> I love that. Yeah. He goes, Never mind. Uh, he opens a box, and in this box that he's found in this hole, there is a buttload of guns. I mean, a lot of guns. ton of guns. Uh, he hands a gun <laughs> to Topsy and goes, kill, Topsy, kill. Uh, <laughs> and Topsy starts with the gun and everything. He goes, look at him go. Yeah, it's wild just, stuff. God, it's so funny to see these old men just uh, being being idiots. Well, uh, that's the thing is, is for some of those guys uh, – Especially ones that I know that are like young that have went to war or whatever like that, oh, or that sure. are my age or a little older. Uh, it's hard to come back and be oh, a human yeah. being. Yeah, but I don't think you have to come back and be an asshole. <laughs> I mean, that's what these guys specialize. in. Well, that was their. That's a generational thing too, because uh, they uh, their trauma. That's how they express their trauma. It was all pushed down, and they screamed and yelled at you instead of like confronting their problems. Or by talking about two Chinese babies for ten dollars. Yeah. Uh, now we get uh, Hank coming out of the house. He's walking out to his truck. He sees a I Heart New York sticker on the back of his truck, and he goes, oh, "Damn it, Dale! Uh, damn it, Dale!" He rips the sticker off, gets in the gets in the truck to start driving, and we see Dale shimmy out from underneath the truck and put uh -huh. another one on the back of his truck. I mean, what a dick! Uh, you hear the radio inside and uh, uh, inside the truck as as Hank's driving. This one's for a twenty dollar gift certificate to Arroyo Diner. Uh, and uh, he goes, now, what is the name of the 50-foot-tall cowboy that greets visitors at the Texas State Fair? Hank says, oh, that's easy. It's, uh, oh, wait a second. I know it. I know it. Dang it. Uh, and then you hear on the radio, is it Big Tex? And the disc jockey says, that's right, Big Tex. And then you start hearing this horn just, and you see behind him, there's a huge truck. 
and he's like right up on his ass, yeah. you know, trying to get him to move over. Uh, he finally kind of moves over, and the guy passes him in the big truck and goes, go back to New York. <laughs> how far Hank has fallen. Uh, now we're at the I don't think anybody's doing that, though. No. Uh, I, don't, I don't even think in that in, in the 2000s or the 90s, no. anybody was well, yelling, go back to New York. I think now it's, it's uh, red versus blue rather than anything else. I can see people yelling about that at other people as they pass them. Oh, a Biden sticker. Yeah. Biden yeah. sucks yeah. on the back of their truck yeah, or something. let's go Brandon, yeah. something like that, right? Uh, all right, now we're at the Hill House. We're at the dinner table. It's Hank, Peggy, and Bobby. Hank is just like, oh, I can't even drive like a Texan anymore, Peggy. I think my truck might be too much vehicle for me. Bobby pipes up and says, Dad, come on, you'll be okay. You just need what Mom likes to call closure. I think we should all go to New York. Uh, and Hank says, the only closure I need is just your mouth, mister. <laughs> <laughs> he gets up and gets on the phone again, calls his mom. Tilly says, hello. He goes, Mom, Dad told me everything. I know I was born in New York. She goes, oh, Hank, I'm so sorry. I wanted to say something, but I didn't want to hurt you. He goes, oh, don't pretend you were looking out for me. You were looking out for you, you and your romantic getaway to the rotten Big Apple. Uh, she goes, wait, Cotton's trying to pin this on me? It was his idea to go to New York. Hank's like, what? Well, one of you's not telling the truth. Oh, hell, I know who it is. <laughs> like, yeah. it's like, he knows who it is. Uh, she goes, uh, your father dragged me pregnant to New York, and then he dragged me into a baseball game at Yankee Stadium. Now we get another one of these yellowish flashbacks. We're at Yankee Stadium. Uh, Tilly uh, is, is kind of doing the voiceover. She goes, uh, it was unseasonably warm that day, and all I wanted was a glass of water. And uh, you see uh, a younger Cotton there next to a very young uh, Topsy. And he goes, a glass of water? Suck on a pebble and keep looking storked out. <laughs> Suck yeah. on a pebble. Suck on a pebble. I don't understand that. I'm not sure on that one either. Uh, he goes, you're our ticket through the police line. Uh, and he gets the binoculars from, like I say, a very young Topsy. Uh, he's he's uh, searching around, and he sees Castro. Uh, Fidel Castro coming to the stands. He's got the police with him. There's armed guards, all this stuff. He goes, well, Fidel, you should have stayed in Washington on your unofficial visit. Now they're going to have to carry you out on a seventh inning stretcher. Uh, now uh, he, he It pissed people off that bad when they let him into oh, the country? Yeah. I've never well, ever read about that. I'm going to have to read up on but that. But think I, about this, right? It's, it was, it was uh, the Red Scare. Yeah. Uh, very communist. You know, we, we hated communism. Uh, you would just have Khrushchev come over and bang his shoe on the on the podium at the UN. So it was yeah. a big fervor about oh, okay. communism, yeah, was, godless, all that stuff. Yeah, I, I knew a lot about the Red Scare stuff, mm -hmm. uh, the McCarthy era or whatever, McCarthyism. Oh, yeah. And uh, actually, I, I listened to uh, a podcast, and uh, it was uh, Shane Gillis, Matt McCusker. It's their podcast, uh, Matt and Shane's Secret Podcast. But they had Louis C.K. on there, and Louis C.K. is a big history buff. Yeah. So he's also uh, a big buff of showing you his penis while he masturbates in front of you. Well, yeah, but he's still he's still a funny comedian. Sure. Uh, from I'm sure he masturbates very funny. <laughs> <laughs> from the from the beginning they go they go through each president from the very beginning of presidents and they go all the oh, way through cool. them all yeah. and uh, when they got to reagan they took a like an inordinate amount of time talking about him oh, it was and, a big deal. Uh, they they uh they talked about uh, a lot of uh different stuff that's kind of similar reagan was a huge deal it was uh it was this huge shift back to americanism you know i mean everybody you were proud to be an american again and all that yeah this was after the hostage crisis in iran Carter basically got run out on a rail because he didn't do anything about the hostages. Then Reagan came in and basically took credit for what Carter had done, yeah. you know, getting these guys loose. And then um, Reagan is, is credited with bringing on the whole uh, me generation of the 80s, you know, and everybody was making money in Wall Street and all this stuff, you know, and we were all uh, proud to be Americans. Uh, suck it, Lee Greenwood. Uh, I just hate that song. That song is awful yeah they were talking I'll about uh, an American. they were talking about uh how reagan got shot and how george hw bush was in texas when he got shot and he refused to come back from texas at the time oh yeah like he refused to come back and uh, a lot of people were joking because at the time uh he they, they were saying that uh uh the conspiracy theory behind it was that george hw was trying to have him killed and uh, the reason why he didn't leave Texas is because if they found out any kind of involvement that he had in it, that he wouldn't be extradited by the Texas governor. Well, Because the Hinckley family, I was reading about it too after I yeah. listened to the podcast, yeah. the Hinckley family was, they were friends historically for generations with the Bush family. 
So they were like, no, they knew each other. Like John Hinckley and George H. Wow. W. Bush had, had yeah, at some point in their lives mm. as kids or wherever mm. in their lives yeah. had been in the same rooms before. Well, and the thing they don't talk about or you don't hear about enough with George H. W. Bush is he was head of the freaking CIA. Yeah, he was the head of the CIA. I mean, come on, you don't learn. A, you, you probably nah, learn a couple yeah. of tricks. You gotta learn something. You gotta figure CIA. something out. Yeah. Uh, and so she, uh, he, he drags uh, Cotton drags them both off. Uh, again, a very very pregnant Tilly. Uh, and Topsy, uh, and uh, we now see a picture of, Ca or we see Castro over there sitting down in his thing. He's, he's smelling his cigar. Uh, and then <laughs> here they come barreling down the, uh, the entryway towards Castro. Uh, and uh, you hear, woman with a fetus coming through. Have a cigar. <laughs> <laughs> Topsy, <laughs> you then see him stop. Topsy puts a blow dart in a freaking cigar, which is crazy yeah. to me. Uh, and he goes, have a cigar, you weak chin Cuban son of a bitch. I mean, Jesus, that is rough. And then uh, you hear you hear Tilly uh, scream in pain. Her water breaks. She kind of nudges Topsy when she when her water breaks and she goes into pain. He miss blows the dart, and it hits one of the baseball players who immediately falls immediately over dead. Immediately falls over dead. Which <laughs> That's, that's terrible, yeah. That's not even part of this thing? That's murder. Uh, yeah, it's just flat-out murder. Uh, he goes, get down! The baby's coming! Uh, and he goes, not now, woman! Hold it in! Go! You're running for two, woman! And they all run off. Uh, they're being chased by uh, security. So they hightail it, and apparently they run into the ladies' room where Hank is born because we hear the cries. Yep. little baby and Hank. And Hank has to sit down. That would be uh, bad Hank. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Hank has to sit down when he hears this because we've ended the flashback now, and he goes, I was born in the ladies' room at Yankee Stadium. I mean, that is... Is that worse than being born in New York? I think so. Being think born in so. a baseball stadium? Because, number one, you're in New York. Number two, you're in the Yankee Stadium. I mean, as that's a Tex pretty rough. As a Texas yeah. Ranger that's pretty rough, fan, yeah. he's probably a Ranger fan. You know fan. he's a Ranger fan. I don't think he's an Astros fan. Don't, do, they, do they have a rivalry? No, they don't, do they? Rangers and Astros? Yeah, no, no Rangers oh, Yankees? and Yankees. Yeah, because they're, they're both in the American League. Okay, I thought, yeah. I thought it was just kind of one of those things where everybody in baseball – had a rivalry with the Yankees, like they're like the most well, hated team in baseball or something. They are. Uh, they're they're the Cowboys of baseball, basically, because right? it's the, the most popular, oldest team well, kind of thing. Also, you have to remember that baseball doesn't have a um, salary cap. No, they don't. So they just uh, paid a guy like seven hundred million, million yeah. for twenty years. Yeah. But they don't have a they don't have a, a a salary cap. So the Yankees just outspend people. And that's how they win rings. I mean, they just outspend they people. They just have the that's money to spend. They just got a bunch of money. Yeah. You know, if they did that for the Cowboys, the Cowboys would be able oh. to buy every player oh, they wanted. Yeah. They're the number yeah. one sports franchise, not in, the world. Not in just yeah. football, but in the, in the world, yeah. Nine billion. It was like some article I read this morning. It was talking about like $9.8 billion or $9.7 billion. So we're back at the VFW. It's night. Um, there's a secret planning uh, they've got a map out on a table, one single light over all the old men. It looks like, you know, planning for Ocean's Eleven or something like that. You know, it's very, very uh, uh, dark in there except for where you can see the, the map. And uh, Cotton is explaining, and at midnight we rendezvous in San Antonio with the Jorge Lopez. As you know, he's half Mexican, half Cuban. For this job, we'll be using the half that's Cuban. <laughs> <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Uh, Irwin speaks up and he goes, how are we going to get to San Antonio? We can't all fit in your Cadillac car. I guess I could take a few people in my Cadillac car, but, but I don't want to. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. You idiot. We can't use our own cars. Remember how the cops tracked you down when you hit that fire hydrant? We're hitting more than a fire hydrant this time. Uh, Hank busts in through the door. And I mean, y you don't often see Hank in this much of a tizzy. You no, know? you don't. He's like, I know the truth, dad. Mom told me everything. The ladies' room, Yankee Stadium, Mr. Fidel Castro. Again, here's one of those quotes by, mm -hmm. by Cotton. So the pig squealed. Well, I guess he can't be bland at her. That's what pigs do. Uh, <laughs> Jesus, what a dick. Uh, Hank says, it's your fault I was born in New York, and I can't drive my truck, and I tried a bagel, and I actually liked it. <laughs> and Cotton hears this, and the only thing he hears is, oh, his truck. Uh, Hank says, no, no more lies. I love that bagel. Uh, he goes, go to hell. And then 
as he's yelling at his dad, Topsy comes up from behind him, and he's got a garrote, yeah. which is is two little holders and a and a number two steel piano wire. wire. Uh, yeah, what they call yeah. it, right? Number two mm-hmm. piano wire. And he's going to put it around <laughs> Hank's neck and literally kill him. Uh, and <laughs> Cotton kind of waves him off a little bit. He goes, "Go to hell." He goes, "But I am in hell." I spent these last 40 years tearing myself up for letting my firstborn son be born outside of Texas. He goes, are you apologizing? I think you deserve one. If I could just shove you back into your mother and do it all over again in Texas, I would. He goes, oh, Dad. That sounds disgusting. Yeah. He says, tell you what, Hank, let me make it up to you. We'll go out tonight, raise some hell. We'll make you one of us, a real Texan, and we can all get in your truck. Come on, Hank. All I'm asking for is a second chance. Uh, They hug and while they're hugging, uh, Cotton is making gestures to the other guys with uh, – <laughs> he's such a jackass because he's fooling yeah, he's his rough. son into this whole thing, right? Yeah, he's roping him into it. You see the other guys carrying out a big box behind Hank's back uh, while Hank's like, well, a real Texan man's night out. That's just what I needed. I'll tell you what. He goes, sure. Now give me the keys. So, that is the second commercial break, and we will take that, and we'll be right back. Right back. Ned Hillsdale, a hard-drinking, foul-mouthed ex-cop, turned private detective in the city of Chicago. He lives dangerously, loves intensely, and drinks harder than anyone. The very things that got him kicked off the force now make him the city's best detective. Set against the low rumble of sad jazz and the hum of underground crime, Ned Hillsdale, Private Detective is available anywhere you get your podcasts and at roguemedianetwork.com. From Boobays, a horror movie podcast, comes Abaddon Eyes, exploring the Hell House LLC universe. In this thrilling podcast, your hosts will guide you through a comprehensive journey across all four Hell House LLC movies by acclaimed writer-director Stephen Cognetti, where we'll uncover the intricate web of supernatural occurrences, malevolent entities, and the unfortunate souls who dared to enter the cursed Abaddon Hotel. We'll look at lore and the immersive universe that is being built before our eyes in the Hell House series. Expect in-depth discussions, expert analysis, and exclusive interviews with cast and crew members, including Stephen Cognetti himself. Join us as we revisit the spine-tingling scares, unearth hidden clues, and discuss fan theories that have emerged since the release of all four films and talk about the possibility of even more to come. Whether you're a devoted fan or a newcomer to the series, Abaddon Eyes offers an immersive and enlightening experience that will leave you craving more. Subscribe now and embark on a journey that will challenge your courage and leave you questioning reality. Welcome to Abaddon Eyes, exploring the Hell House LLC universe, where the horrors of the Abaddon Hotel come to life through the power of audio storytelling. You can find Abaddon Eyes, exploring the Hell House LLC universe anywhere you get your podcasts or at roguemedianetwork.com. All right, and we are back. Uh, We are at Pro-Am Sports, which is a gun shop slash shooting range. Uh, And you see uh, Hank out there. uh, He's firing a pistol, and he's he's really not a good shot. He's missing that target pretty well. He goes, you know, this is the first time we've gone shooting together, and you haven't humiliated me. I'm having a ball. Oh, that's nice. Now, give me the gun. Uh, He gives him the gun. But he lays it down, and so Cotton picks it up with a pencil so he doesn't touch it and puts it in a baggie. So you know he's setting up Hank now, right? Mm-hmm. All right, now we're out in the in the front of the Pro-Am Sports, and, of course, Hank's paying for everything. Uh, and Cotton says, uh, we still got to get to San Antonio by midnight and pick up Lopez. Uh, he goes, now, who's Lopez? He goes, yeah, well, how's this? Lopez is the best barbecue takeout in the state. Yeah, and uh, this year too. And Stinky comes up and just drops a big armful of guns and flares yeah. and knives and all kinds of crap. Weapons. They're ready to go. Uh, they're ready to go to war. Yeah. yeah. Hank says, "Old man going to war is funny." <laughs> Hank says, "Boy, that's a lot of knives and flares and stuff for for what exactly?" That's right. 
You go into Lopez, it's dressed like a commando, you get half off. <laughs> Imagine being a Spartan, though. Like, all your life you've been at war, and then as soon as you get oh, too sure. old to go, they're yeah. just like, yeah, you're done. Yes, yes. I, I understand PTSD. I understand all of this stuff. But, good Lord, these guys are, are a little over the top because uh, they're wanting to kill people. I mean, that's 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 a little rough. Uh, yeah. Ger- <laughs> generationally, I think they're they're out there. All right. So now uh, they're driving in San driving to San Antonio. Oh, sorry. Uh, it, he puts down that big pile of stuff. and He goes, boy, that's a lot. He goes, you go into Lopez just like a commando to get half off. He goes barbecue at midnight. <laughs> Good luck finding that in Manhattan. Uh, so now we're in Hank's truck. We're driving to San Antonio. Mm-hmm. Topsy is driving. Topsy is. Yes. Uh uh, Stinky and Irwin are in the back and they're hollowing out a cigar, putting a dart in it. Uh, and then we see inside the cab. Um, well, they, they, they were just in the regular, they, you know, this is like clandestine stuff they're doing. Mm-hmm. They're not doing regular military oh, stuff. Oh, yeah. No, this is. They're doing like this uh, is black ops. OSS Wet work, or whatever. All that stuff, what was it? Know? World War II? CIA was called the Office of, Office of Strategic Strategies or. Maybe. Secret strategy. It's, it's called the OSS for sure. Because actually, uh, I watch a lot of Julia Childs. That's uh, become my background show. Mm-hmm. Uh, her twenty yeah. four hour stream on Pluto. Sure. Uh, I can't have King of the Hills a background show anymore because we do the podcast. So yeah. like, yeah. listening to it that much would be just mind numbing. Sure, uh, fans might not like to hear that, but I can't. No, I, I get it. I, I do so much King of the Hill stuff yeah. in the week that on the background I can't have it on anymore. Yeah. But uh, yeah. she actually her first job as a cook was actually for. The OSS, which is what evolved into the CIA. I saw that. And she made a recipe. uh, And what it was is they had a lot of problems with sharks and stuff hitting the mines, like the underwater mines. Sure. So she had devised a recipe for a paste or something that they would put on the outside of these mines Mm. so it would repel the sharks. Wow. So her first recipe is actually her worst recipe. Shark repellent. Recipe, her worst recipe. Yeah, there's a a really good series on uh, HBO Max, which is Julia. And it's, oh, yeah, it's a reenactment of, you know, oh, like her, her life, her life whatever. and the TV She stuff. had a really, really, like, it's uh, got Fraser's storied brother career. It's her husband. Oh, uh, for real? Yeah. I have mm-hmm. to check that out. She had a really storied, yeah. uh, storied past and storied oh, career. Yeah. She had a really oh. unique career. She was she was amazing. She really was. I like, wa- strong, like I said, I like watching her woman. show. I like it. She has a... Uh, uh, it was a French guy, Pierre or something or another. It's her and this French guy. They oh, have because yeah. she had like a bunch of renditions of her own show, sure. and one of them is her and a French guy. It's like later on when she was yeah. a lot older, but well, she did. Uh, what was the the book was like uh, French cooking for the for the housewife or something like yeah. that. Yeah, no, was, she was legendary. Like she was, she's she brought, like the she, original Martha Stewart. Yeah, as well, far as cooking goes, like French cooking techniques into U.S. kitchens. Yeah, which yeah, is yeah. Amazing. She amazing. like because well, at the time, uh, at the time, Americans, if you didn't know. We were putting hot dogs in Jello, oh, and then she pops up on TV in the the late fifties or early sixties and brings like a different type of cuisine yeah. to the table. So yeah, more man. there was more there was more moms getting involved in making sure the food was sure. different because I didn't grow up in the era of Jello and hot dogs. I didn't either, and I'm glad I didn't. There's and a, you go look at some of those recipes. That stuff looks disgusting. Cut up hot dogs, black olives, <laughs> all this crap inside Jello. You know, it's hilarious. There's you know a, what Jello's made out of? Uh, like? Bones, horse hooves. Yeah, horse hooves and stuff like bones. <laughs> uh, there's actually a a lady on social media. I don't know what her account name is or nothing, but Lady Jello. Their whole house is mid modern, the '50s style. Oh yeah. And she dresses up like a '50s housewife, and she cooks from these these odd those terrible recipes. odd recipes. Yeah, so and her husband eats them on the on. Well, the back then, um, all the magazines, all the homemaking stuff, you know, they were trying to. Was it poverty? Is that what it was? It was just like things. coming. Well, it was. Up, it was, was it coming up off the war? They didn't well, remember. They were, yeah, they they just came out of World War II. Uh, everybody was used to eating rations and, and your mom didn't cook that ever no, in her life, no, did no, she? No, 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 I don't think so. But her mom may have. Yeah. Uh, yeah. I, so the only time I've eaten anything close to that was tomato aspic. Okay. Uh, which is a cold congealed tomato jello with olives and stuff in it. Yeah. That is one of the worst things I've ever put in my mouth. And I've put a lot of things in my mouth. I'd asked my dad about the jello thing too. And he had told me no as well because his mom was born in the twenties. So that would have been something that sh- that would, you know, be about the age of people that were cooking that stuff in the fifties. And he said that we were poor. So he said what we ate was, oh, sure. he said, 
he said dad his dad would stand on the the porch and he would point at a chicken and then they would go grab the chicken he said that's your dinner tonight kind of so thing if you go to the stagecoach inn uh in salado yeah they still serve that tomato aspic Oh, they have That's it like on there? one of their big things. Or it used to be, at least. I don't know if it's still I is. might have to venture down there. Oh, and my God. It's so awful. Oh, just it, just it ask. Like, I just had to ask for a sample for posterity. It's basically ketchup-flavored Jello, and it, it just think about that for a second. That is an awful, awful thing. Unless there's accompaniment. What is it accompany? Oh. What do you put with it? Yeah, like, what well, do you eat it with? You eat it like as a side with your other stuff. Or as an no. appetizer. It's not like a dip or a... a, a no, like a, you, you put cut it on a cracker. It, you cut, yeah, you cut it like in slices. Oh. It's like a giant butter thing, right? Like a big stick of butter almost. That's the shape. Yeah, that sounds... And you just cut it off in little pieces and you eat it. Awful. It's awful. God, it's terrible. My, uh, my wife's grandmother used to make that every Thanksgiving. And I've never ate any of that shit. Yeah, I, I, I would never eat it. I never had to deal with that. Uh, the poverty food in England after the war was just ground meat and potatoes. So in it, like the English meals that I, I, I had as a kid, because my mom was born in 59, which was the last yeah. year of rationing in England. Yeah. So my mom was born at the last year that they were doing British rationing. So all the food that she remembers was, uh, it was all good cooking pretty much in that, good food in that vein um i watch these guys on youtube called jolly yeah uh they just eat different things from around the world it's okay. these two british guys yeah my favorite ones are where they they feed american stuff to like english school children that one's pretty get good their reactions i've Those seen that great. i've seen yeah. them drink the mountain dew oh, and all fantastic. that stuff it's hilarious some yeah. of them like it some of them don't yeah but those two guys and their friend went into a eel shop there in England uh, where, and I didn't realize that the Thames is just full of eels. Yeah, it's full of eels. And yeah. so that's what people ate like a lot in of the eel. poverty times, a lot you know, of during eel. the war, all that stuff. And it, I don't know if you know this, but they've got those little pin bones in them and yeah, they yeah. just, they leave them in there. Yeah. You know, they cook them. Uh, and so these were like little pot pies almost, but full of eel. Yeah. And they yeah. had some sort of, Jelly. Eel pie? Well, they had some sort of like jelly or something that they put on. Or I think they Probably like a it chutney? gravy or something. Oh, a gravy? But it, was, it wasn't gravy. It wasn't gravy? Yeah, it was weird. I don't know. Uh, and then they would do mash, you know, which is mashed potatoes. Yeah. But the way they would do it is they get this plate and they dip out the mash and they just scrape it aco- across the plate. And even these guys, they're eating it and they're going like, you know, they're discussing the fact that English food is not really seasoned. You season it at the table. You yeah, you season it at the yeah. table. That, that's that's yeah. what it is, is. Is there's like three or four seasonings on the table, which isn't a, a lot. Well, they were lot, putting vinegar on the fish on the eel stuff, pie. On the eel pie, yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. Uh, they, they did not like it. Malt, well, I don't really like it. that kind of. That's like aristocratic food. Yeah, I that, love, that's what rich people eat. I love uh, uh, fish and chips with like that malt vinegar. That's oh, that's the tradition was the Ooh, fish baby. and chips with I'll mushy pe- mushed up peas. Yeah, I'll take it. That sounds fine to me. All right, so they're driving to San Antonio. Topsy's driving again. Fatty and Irwin are in the back, hollowing out a cigar, putting a dart in. Uh, we see inside the cab, Hank sitting in the middle. Cotton's on one side. Topsy is driving, and he goes, "There's another Texas plate, Hank. Take a drink." And he pours him. <laughs> he's got a big a bottle of like bourbon or, or scotch, I guess is what it looks yeah, like. Yeah, yeah. He pours him another drink, uh, and then Hank, of course, is drunk. Uh, he goes, "I just like to tell Buck Strickland to kiss off." <laughs> <laughs> and then Topsy's driving, and he goes, Ah, the Alamo! Uh, and he points it out. They they pull over, and um, uh, Cotton says, Oh, my goodness, the cradle of Texas liberty. Hank, every Texan ought to have his picture taken in front of the Alamo. They get Hank out. He's stumbling. Uh, they put him, uh, they stand him up in front of the gate at the Alamo. Uh, and he goes, Oh, would you be in it with me, Dad? No, but I'll let you hold today's newspaper and Topsy's gun make you look like a real Texan. <laughs> so <laughs> basically, they're just setting him Trying up like Hinkley. Him at, yeah, yeah, that's it. Putting him at the scene of the crime. Uh, he goes, now, what does a newspaper have to... And then they take the picture. As soon as they take the picture, they put it in another <laughs> envelope. So, I mean, they're going to mail this stuff off and really set him up as a patsy. Uh, we see a... Uh, uh, a bus pass in the in the background. It stops at the bus stop next to the Alamo, which I'm not sure if there's a bus stop in front of the Alamo. I'm sure there is. Uh, a guy in a wheelchair gets off the bus, and uh, Cotton looks at him and goes, "Took you long enough, Lopez." Uh, Hank says, "That's Lopez." Uh, and then you hear Stinky go, "He knows too much." <laughs> Hank's like, "Huh?" 
Uh, and then Cotton comes up and goes, Hank, close your eyes and put out your hands. Time for a real Texas surprise. Topsy, get the rope. And so they start <laughs> wrapping Hank's hands. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, tying him like up. hog tying hog him tying almost. Him, yeah. yeah. You know, okay, now uh, I, I do know too much. You got me a genuine Texas lasso like I wanted for my ninth birthday, right? I tell you, Dad, just when I think I've got you figured out, hey, this isn't a lasso, it's clothesline. He says, uh, for a New Yorker, you ain't got much street smarts. <laughs> he goes, I am not a New Yorker. I became a Texan when I ate the worm. So I guess it was tequila, yeah, tequila in the truck. Yeah. He goes, yeah, you didn't chew it. You ain't a Texan. Yeah, Patsy from New York. Hank says, Patsy? But the point of this whole trip was to leave me drunk and Texan. Uh, he says, uh, the point of tonight is to kill Castro and bring back his chin pelt. Chin pelt. Chin pelt. That's, <laughs> that's, a, that's a description for a beard. Yeah. Uh, Hank says, uh, what about making me a Texan? Wait, all this was about trying to frame me? Uh, Cotton says, you won't fry for it. We're just covering our own tracks. Who'd believe you'd be man enough to kill Castro? He goes, Dad, you can't kill... And again, remember, his hands are tied. Hands are tied. Can't goes, do nothing. Dad, you can't kill Castro. For God's sakes, you're not even supposed to drive at night. Now untie me. The game is over. Uh, Cotton says, Lopez, take his clothes. Stinky, throw him over the fence. So the next thing we see is Hank is on the other side of the fence at the Alamo. And all I wrote down here was security, question mark, because there's none. Because none, Because they've yeah. thrown a man over the fence. Uh, Hank is now right up there. Uh, he's behind the fence. They drive off. They leave him with no clothes. Uh, and he's behind the Alamo gate. Uh, he says, uh, 41 years old and I, I didn't see it coming. Uh, and then you hear a car passing by a guy goes, ah, nice socks. <laughs> Cause Hank is basically down to the yeah. skibbies. He goes, Oh, I got to hide my nudity. Uh, he runs into the Alamo again. Where's the security? Falls down on the ground. You see the the moonlight coming through the window and stuff. Uh, and Hank gets up, and he starts looking around. He's like, hello, anyone here? Uh, and he finds a light switch. Uh, you see all these – you see these 32 flags yep. lined up, right? Uh, so what is that, 16 on each side. And it's he reading from a plaque that's under the flags. And he says, these 32 flags honor the birthplaces of the Alamo Defenders. Kentucky, Tennessee, Ohio, New York, New York. They were New born. New York. <laughs> they yeah, were born across go. America, but they did Texas. But they died Texas heroes. Then he hears something over, kind of in the corner. It's not really anything, but he turns around. He goes, "Hello," uh, and then he sees a statue of Jim Bowie, the guy who invented the Bowie knife. The Bowie the knife. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He goes, "Oh, Jim Bowie and his knife," uh, and he goes up to it and he goes, "Easy now." Uh, and he's using the knife in the statue to cut the ropes, right? Yep. Which it's it's a it's a rock statue. It right? is a it's rock a marble statue. statue. I don't know why he's cutting that, but um, anyway, he says, uh, and then he kind of stumbles off a little bit, and he goes, "Oh, sorry about this, Mister Crockett." And he sees Davy Crockett dressed in his period clothes, right? Uh, and so he comes busting out of the Alamo, uh, wearing all of Davy Crockett's clothes. Also wearing this raccoon hat that Davy Crockett uh, had on. And he goes, why am I wearing this hat? And he just throws the hat off. Which the only thing I could think of when I saw that part, I was like, when Mike Judge was doing this, I bet that was like a uh, uh, just a uh, improv thing where he goes, Probably, why am I yeah. wearing the hat? <laughs> you know? uh, all right, so next we see uh, uh, Hank pulling up in a cab at the pier at Corpus Christi. He gets out, runs out of the cab, and goes, thanks for the lift. I don't normally hitchhike, which is weird seeing Hank not pay for something. You know? Yeah, super weird. Yeah. The cabbie's like, Arr! uh And then uh, we're at this dock, and all the old guys are there, uh, and they're loading up a boat. And you go, keep moving. And then you hear Stinky, and, and I guess this is um, I guess this is Stinky saying this. He goes, yeah, hold on. It's starting to drizzle. Uh, he says, suck it up, Stinky. It rained for 17 days at Guadalcanal. Didn't hear you complain then. He goes, I complained a lot. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Hank runs up. Uh, he goes, stop. He says, it's Little Miss New York. He says, that's enough, Dad. I may be your son, but I can't change that. But I'm not about to be your patsy. He goes, well, I suppose you're a sucker punch. And then he tries to swing at Hank. Yeah, it I love how he announces well. sucker punch. Sucker punch. Sucker punch. Yeah, it doesn't go too well. He swings at him. Uh, Hank kind of falls down. He goes, you don't have what it takes to stop me. Do it, Topsy. 
And then Topsy blows his big, giant cheeks full of breath on Hank. Yeah. Hank goes, oh, old guy breath. And he starts to stumble. And then uh, Irwin pulls out his oxygen tank cord, trips Hank. He falls out of the boat, goes into the water, and goes all the way under. Uh, he goes, all right, prepare to cast off. First, we got to figure out the direction of the wind. He holds up his, he's, he licks his finger, holds it up in the in the wind. Yeah, who's got saliva? He goes, who's got saliva? <laughs> then you hear Stinky say, you know, Colonel, your boy should have come up by now. Uh, even Topsy can't hold his breath that long. And he goes, what? Uh, all right, Stinky, you better get him. And Stinky literally picks up a machine gun and starts firing into the into water. The water <laughs> He's yeah. He goes, no, 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 don't shoot him. Jump in and save him. Uh, you see Hank come up finally. He's got the max. Uh, he's got the oxygen mask from Irwin on his face, so yep. that's how he was able to stay down for so long. He goes, "All right, Dad, it's over. I got your spark plugs, so you're not going anywhere." And he holds the two spark plugs up. He goes, "We don't need spark plugs. We'll row to Cuba." And then he kind of looks at the guys, and they're all like, oh, "Yeah, we're not doing shit, this. This yeah. has gone long enough." He goes, "Well, that's how they got there." And then Stinky says, "I have a doctor's appointment." I got the own set. Uh, I got the adult onset diabetes. Yeah, which is just diabetes. Goes, <laughs> yeah. If I don't watch my weight, they're gonna cut my foot off. <laughs> he goes, Christ, I'm hungry. Uh, then Irwin says something. He goes, It's puzzle day at the rec center. I'm gonna finish that son of a bitch lighthouse. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, they all went soft on him. <laughs> yeah, and uh, Cotton, he's not giving up. Yeah. Fine, you, you sissy, sissy girls. girls. I'll do the job myself. He gets a pipe wrench out of the toolbox. And he goes, hell, I'll swim to Cuba with this wrench between my teeth. Then I'll pose as a beautiful female plumber. And then when a toilet clogs in the presidential palace, I'll... Uh, and he's even tired at this point, you know. Mm -hmm. He sits down, drops the wrench, and he's just pouting, basically. He goes... Uh -huh. I just wanted to kill Castro. <laughs> just I just so wanted to kill Castro. <laughs> and Hank's like, I know, Dad. So I know. Patting him on the back. Yeah. <laughs> like a kid disappointed. I just wanted some ice cream. Cotton is honestly like the luckiest guy because Hank, he's always there for him. Always. Always. No matter how much he screws mm -hmm. with him, he is always there for him. All right. Next thing we see is we're at the uh, the Corpus Christi Pier. Uh, there's a bunch of cars out there. They're picking up all the old men. Yep. Uh, Irwin's daughter is trying to get him into a van, and she goes, Hank, thanks again for calling. We were starting to get worried. Irwin turns to his damn daughter and goes, take your hands off me, you gutter slut. <laughs> and she looks at him and goes, oh, Whoa. daddy. Like, like he just says that shit all the time. Uh, Hank is wet. Uh, he's trying to dry off with a towel standing next to the car that Peggy's in. Uh, she says, Hank, informed sources tell me that you were dead in the water and then you came back to life. So you were reborn in Texas, which means you are now a native Texan. He finally gets in the car with her and he goes, nope, I'm not a native Texan. I'm just a Texan. She goes, and I am a Texan too. He says, I don't remember seeing any Montana flags at the Alamo. She goes, well, it wasn't a state yet. He goes, fine. Everybody's a Texan. Change planes that's to Dallas. Funny, you're though. a Texan. That's hilarious, yeah. <laughs> and then they drive off, and that's our credits. After the credits, we hear, well, I, I suppose. Sucker punch. Sucker punch. And that is it. That's, uh, that's season, season five, five episode, episode 10, episode Yankee Hanky. Which Once again, check. shitty cotton, shitty Peggy. Nah, that's halfway. Yeah, halfway of this season. That's halfway season five right wow. there. Yep. The next Amazing. one is Hank and uh Ann Richards. Oh, cool. The Great Glass Elevator. Yeah, think, Ann Richards is the one who screwed up the uh the um the lottery for well, us. Well she didn't screw it up. Yeah, she did. She did? She signed the wrong thing. Oh. Uh okay, so uh just signed real the quick wrong check. <laughs> well, she didn't read it real well. It oh. all goes into the general fund. It doesn't go into the educational fund. Oh, so, so it's just yeah. a slush fund. Uh, so, uh, Damn. all right. She tried though. Uh, we'll I give guess. her an e I saw her driving effort. down the road one time, uh, when she was governor and she was reading the paper while she was driving. She's from Lacey Lakeview. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Uh, so uh, before it was called Lacey Lakeview, I think it was just, it was Lake just Lacey. View. Well, it was separate. It used to be Lacey <laughs> was and it really? Lakeview. Oh, I didn't know Yeah, that. yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, the actual like Lakeview part was where yeah. all the little, they get them little, like little ponds and oh, lakes yeah, and stuff okay. off of, uh, like in between, uh, like Spring Road, I think yeah. is what it's yeah, called. Like all about. them houses, like yep. in between there, yep. that was like Lakeview, and the other side was Lacey, and then yeah, they combined I, them. I hung I hung out in Lacey Lakeview for a while, and they had Northcrest. Oh yeah, I remember. Northcrest. And then Northcrest uh, in the nineties got absorbed by Lacey Lakeview. So I want to mention something we hadn't mentioned in a while. Uh, please go if you can check out our Patreon. Yeah, please it's, do that. It's just for support. <clears throat> 
Uh, if you can help, we would certainly appreciate yeah, it. Yeah, we appreciate this, it. This show does cost money to make. Uh, also, uh, I'll mention this again Friday, but uh, I wanted to ask and see if you guys were interested in us taking a few of these Fridays and doing basically Mike Judge movie reviews. Movie reviews. So like Office Space, Idiocracy, Extract, you know, anything else he made. Um, I thought that might be fun. Or just any different. movie in general, whatever you yeah. want. Us, whatever. Yeah. Uh, you want to tell them where they can find us? You can find us at B-W-A-A-A-K-O-T-H on all social medias, and you can find us at B-W-A-A-A-K-O-T-H.com. Also, make sure you check out Swimmer's Ear, our Adult Swim podcast, Adult Swim Swam podcast. Uh, Swimmer's Ear. This week, I think we're doing another infomercial, uh, something about coyotes. Caddy so. suit. Yeah. All right, guys. Thanks again for joining us, and we will catch you again on Friday. We matanye. We matanye indeed. This has been a Rogue Media Network production. <laughs>